In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can experimentally measure the enthalpy of combustion of a reaction. So just to remind ourselves, combustion reactions are when we take a hydrocarbon, react it with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. What's really important here to note is that combustion reactions are always, always, always exothermic. So they should always have a negative delta H value. So how do we then go about measuring the enthalpy of combustion for a combustion reaction? Well, because they are exothermic reactions, the heat given out in a combustion reaction can be used to heat another substance of known specific heat capacity, and pretty typically we use water. So you can see the setup here where we would have whatever we're uh, combusting down in this, it's called a spirit burner. So it could be an alcohol here or it could be um, any kind of alkane, whatever we're combusting. And we set that on fire, we ignite it, and then the heat given off here is used to heat up the water in a beaker that's sitting above it. And then you can measure the temperature change in the water as you're heating up this, um, this water. So basically, there's a few different values you need to record or make sure that you have as you're doing this particular experiment. The first is the uh, mass of the water as well as the temperature change of the water because both of those are going to come into our Q equals MC delta T equation. And then we also need the mass change of the substance combusted. So you'd measure the mass of the spirit burner before and after you finished um, heating up your water sample. So then here's sort of a typical sort of example you might see or data you may get from an experiment. It says here to use the following data to determine the enthalpy change of combustion of ethanol. Given the specific heat capacity of water is 4.18. So uh, we've got the mass of the water. We've got the initial and final temperatures of the water. And then we've got the initial and final masses of the spirit burner itself. So let's start here and we're going to do Q equals MC delta T. And really important to know that we're doing this for the water. So all of the values that are going into Q equals MC delta T have to do with the water that we heated up. So the mass of the water we're going to take here of 150.00. And then we've got our specific heat capacity of water. And then we've got our temperature change of water. So 45.7 minus 19.5. So if we do this calculation, we get and we don't want to round off here just yet because we're not done our calculation, but we get that many joules of energy. Okay. From here now, we need to get an enthalpy of combustion, and that is going to be the Q value or the negative Q value over the moles of the alcohol that we burned. So we need the number of moles of alcohol that we burned. To get that, we have the mass of the alcohol that we burn. So we can find the mass that we burn by taking final minus initial, or just kind of taking the difference there. You know, we, we don't really want a negative mass, so uh, let's just take the absolute value of that, and that's 1.05 grams. So then to find moles, we're gonna convert that using the molar mass which is 46.08. So the number of moles is 0 0.02278. Kind of good to keep about four non-zero decimal places. Um, can be pretty helpful there. So then our delta H is going to be equal to negative our Q value. 427.02278. That's in joules, remember. And then divide that by our moles. And then if we want it in kilojoules, we do need to divide by a thousand as well. So we're just going to do this all in one step here. That gives us a delta H 
of negative 721 kilojoules per mole. And so that's rounded off for significant digits. Now this is a great experiment, but there are a lot of possible experimental errors that can happen here. And so it's worthwhile just kind of noting a few that are possibilities. The first is that there is definitely heat loss to the surroundings. So you're, you're heating up the alcohol here and heating up the water, but the, um, the heat can be lost to the surrounding air itself, or it could also be lost to heating up the calorimeter itself. So the, the heat loss is going into heating the copper can in this case, as well as heating the surrounding air. So you could improve the experiment by determining the specific heat capacity of the can and taking that into account when doing the calculation. You could also insulate the can so that there's less heat that's lost through the can to the surroundings. Um, or you could use some sort of draft shield to reduce convection currents around the experiment itself. So those are some possible ways that you could improve this particular experiment. The second possible error is incomplete combustion. So you could be producing some just carbon and carbon, carbon monoxide instead. And when you have incomplete combustion, it actually gives off less heat than complete combustion does. So it's not gonna give you the true picture of what the delta H of combustion is. Finally, the last one is that you could also have some evaporation of the water. So you'd be losing mass of water there or uh, evaporation of the combusted substance. So again, your mass value would be off for your combusted substance, or you could have both. Um, but both of those are pretty minor compared to the other possible errors here. So that's it for measuring experimentally the enthalpy change of combustion. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.